It was one of the biggest creatures ever to roam the Earth. It was longer than your average school bus and could easily weigh more than 10 elephants combined. But where did it live? How did it end up having this size? And most importantly, why is it extinct nowadays? Let's find out! The Megalodon was the largest predator ever known in our planet's history. In terms of its location, the Megalodon lived practically in all waters on our globe, except near the poles. The reason why there were no Megalodon teeth found in Antarctica is probably that the gigantic creature adapted to only warm, tropical, and subtropical waters. The younger ones liked to keep to the shores, while full-grown adults preferred coastal areas. But they could easily move into the open ocean as well. How do we know the Megalodon was so widely spread? We can only presume based on the fact that they discovered the most northern fossils off the coast of Denmark and the most southern in New Zealand. The discussion of how the Megalodon got this size is still open in the scientific community. They recently found out that not all the specimens from this fascinating species reached the same huge size. This has to do with a little something called the Bergman's Rule which says that the temperature of the surrounding environment affects the animal's body size because they either need to conserve or shed heat. The megalodons that reach cooler waters probably needed more body weight to make sure they survived in low temperatures. On the contrary, those living in warmer waters had to be smaller to avoid burning up. But what did this enormous fish look like? Most modern depictions show the megalodon resembling an enormous great white shark. But well, it seems it may not necessarily be correct. The megalodon likely had a much shorter nose and a flatter jaw that looked almost squashed when compared with a great white shark. It also seems to have something in common with the modern blue shark – extra-long pectoral fins. They needed these to support their weight and size while navigating the planet's waters. Lastly, the lady megalodons seem to have been about twice as large as the gentleman. As for their offspring, even a small megalodon was enormous, at least 6.5 feet from nose to tail. How do we know that? Because specialists have stumbled upon megalodon nursery habitats in Panama, Maryland, the Canary Islands, and Florida. Even the piles of used diapers were enormous. Nah, not really. Surely the scariest aspect of the megalodon's looks was its mouth. I mean, think about it. Megalodon had whales for dinner, so it obviously needed to open its mouth wide enough. Scientists have estimated that its jaw would span a mind-boggling size, 9 by 11 feet wide. Just to paint you a better picture, that means it could have easily gulped down two adult people side by side. Wait, which two adults? Those impressive jaws also feature 276 teeth. Based on modern reconstructions of the force of its bite, it looks like it may have been one of the most, if not the most, powerful animals of prey ever to exist in. For comparison, humans can have a bite force of around 1,300 newtons. Today, great white sharks have been estimated to be able to bite down with a force of over 18,000 newtons. The megalodon tops all the records, with an estimated power of bite up to 10 times greater than that. It could basically crush a car with very little effort. Its teeth were also pretty amazing. Similar to sharks, the megalodon was fast in replacing its broken or worn teeth. With four or five rows of teeth in its mouth, it basically acted like a conveyor belt, growing back damaged or missing teeth within about 48 hours. This means that an adult megalodon probably would have grown several thousand teeth throughout its lifetime. It was nice of them to do that, though, since it's probably one of the reasons why megalodon teeth are so common in fossil records and were able to study them properly. To maintain its impressive physique, the megalodon had to eat somewhere around 2,500 pounds of food per day. Can't wrap your head around that? Well, it was the equivalent of one and a quarter cows per day to survive. It's like if you had to eat 3,300 cans of tuna every day. I've used the word megalodon a lot, but have I mentioned where it comes from? When translated from Greek, it means giant tooth. Ah, those clever Greeks. However, this giant shark's full scientific name is a bit more complicated – Carcharocles megalodon. But are these gigantic predators actually extinct? We tend to believe so, but let's be honest for a second. 
we've come to know more about the surface of Mars than the depths of our oceans. Like, we've only explored 15% of our oceans altogether. Who knows what may be lying out there in the deep? Maybe some ancient predators? The Mariana Trench is the deepest oceanic trench on Earth. The Challenger Deep, its deepest part, is so deep that you could dip the whole of Mount Everest in there and it would still be over a mile above the surface. That's deep. If a megalodon or two ever needed a place to crash, that would be a discreet enough location. However, the Mariana Trench is not a particularly comfy place to be in. You know, because it's cold and steeped in total darkness and all? The temperatures here are around 36 degrees Fahrenheit all year round. And to top it all off, the pressure is a thousand times stronger than at sea level. So it's safe to assume that if any megalodon is hiding in here, its teeth and bones might not be looking so good. Because of the intense pressure here in the Mariana Trench, proteins and calcium start to dissolve and disintegrate. That's why, for example, the Haddell snailfish, the deepest dwelling fish we've discovered, has evolved to feature flexible cartilage instead of bones. To survive here, the megalodon would also need to learn to navigate in complete darkness. That means it would have to either become luminescent or evolve to grow massive eyes like the giant squid. While it may sound like an intriguing and good idea for a movie script, most scientists don't think it's possible. Why? Well, most of them say it's because of the megalodon's size. Most foods that megalodons like to eat live in shallow ocean areas and not in the deep, deep sea. Specialists believe that if these animals were actually still roaming our waters, there's no way we wouldn't know about it. They would need to come up for dinner every now and then, right? Their food is also the most likely cause of why the megalodon is not alive anymore. While some specialists believe the megalodon became extinct because of a drop in the ocean water temperature, most scientists suggested that the shifting food chain dynamics may have been more to blame. Why? Because, at some point, there was less and less of its primary food source, baleen whales. And at the same time, the numbers of its natural competitors, like smaller predatory sharks like the great white shark and whales, increased. The megalodon did live on this planet a lot more than we did, and way back when we didn't even exist yet. They were here for nearly 70 times longer than we, modern humans, have, inhabiting the oceans for around 20 million years. Homo sapiens appeared around 300,000 years ago. The megalodon managed to survive for so long mostly because of its unbeatable size. I mean, they can make a meal out of almost everything in the sea at the time. We may think about both of them as prehistoric creatures, but the megalodons and the dinosaurs never coexisted on Earth. The dinosaurs probably died out about 66 million years ago. Megalodons seem to have appeared a bit later. That's because the oldest megalodon fossils we have yet discovered are from the Miocene Epoch, which began 23 million years ago. So long, Meg! That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.